Senator Graham. Would you say that this investigation was done by the book? Um, hard to say what by the well, book is. Well, who wrote this but, book? <laughs> if um, this was done by the book, who wrote the, it? Um, I think there are reasons to raise yeah. questions on and, certain and, of these steps and, and decisions. Mean, I think you did a good job, but the whole idea oh. that this is normal, folks, there's nothing here normal. I don't want you to think the FBI does this day in and day out. This is not normal. Now, I think that's what you tried to find. Yeah. Do you believe it's pretty clear to everybody in the country by July the 5th that Donald Trump was the presumptive nominee of the Republican Party? That's my recollection. Um, and from well, the text, the convention it's pretty was on clear. The 18th. Yeah. Right. And the yeah. texts, I think, reflect that as well. Okay, I'm going to read this uh, text message from uh, Paige Destrock on August the 8th after he'd gotten the nomination. She says, Trump's not ever going to become president, right? Right? Strzok responded, no, no, he's not. We'll stop it. Now, I don't know how you feel about that. That's pretty unnerving. Strzok, wasn't he the lead investigator of the Clinton email investigation? Um, he was, in essence, the lead investigator. Okay, yeah. so the head guy looking at Clinton on August the 8th says, we got to stop Trump. Now, did, was that just idle talk? A week later, here's what they say to each other. Strzok text message to Lisa Page. I want to believe the path you threw out for consideration in Andy's office, that there's no way he gets elected, but I'm afraid we can't take that risk. It's like an insurance policy in the unlikely event you die before you're 40. Now that's a week later. Who's Andy? Uh, our understanding it was Andy McCabe, the deputy director. So you got the deputy director meeting with the lead investigator of the Clinton email investigation and Miss Page, who's involved somehow, meeting in Andy's office discussing taking out an insurance policy to make sure Donald Trump doesn't become president. Did you? Is that what you're telling us? Get rid of um, I, I'll be clear. I can't speak to whether McCabe, Mr. McCabe, was there or not. Did you ask Mr. McCabe? We, uh, we did. He said he was not. He did not recall. So one of them's there. lying. So, so I want you to reopen this investigation and come back and tell us: Do you believe Strzok, or do you believe McKay? Because you just told me the deputy director of the FBI says he's not the Andy. Oh, he does. Just to be clear, it, they're talking about what, a, a conversation in his office. Yeah. He's claiming he is stating he does not recall whether he was there <coughs> or not. And well, neither of those individuals are putting him in the middle of their conversation. All I'm saying is that the Andy's office where this occurred, he wasn't there. What did Strzok, did Strzok say he was there? Strzok says he was there. Well, somebody's lying. So anyway, we'll figure that out later. None of this is normal, folks. Uh, let's, let's look at the actual interview itself. Uh, how many people were involved in the Clinton interview on July the 2nd? Uh, there were... Um, I believe six or eight people present, but two agents conducting the interview. So as I understand it, there were two agents and two prosecutors. Correct. Okay. Now this was an email sent in February 2016 from Page to McCabe. Mm -hmm. Hey, you've surely already considered this, but in my view, our best reason to hold the line at two and two, two agents and two prosecutors, is she might be our next president. How did you feel about that? We were concerned about it, and we lay, it at, lay out here why we were concerned. Okay, let's keep talking about this interview. One of the FBI agents in the interview said on Election Day mm -hmm. to another FBI agent, you should know that I'm with her. Now, her was Clinton, right? Correct. How do you feel about that? Very concerned. Okay, eventually very concerned gets to be enough already. Mm -hmm. I'm very concerned, you know, I'm, one, I'm glad I don't text an email. <laughs> That's one thing I'm glad I don't do. But circumstance, have you ever proved a case by circumstantial evidence, Director Ray? Yes. Well, I'm going to write you a letter and talk about why you should reconsider your findings as to whether or not it affected the investigation. Here's what Ms. Page, Mr. Ms. Page said on March the 4th, 2016. God, Trump is a loath, loath, loathsome human. How do you feel about that? I mean, she's entitled to her opinion. 
I think we've laid out here why we were so concerned about it. Well, when you add it all up, mm -hmm. as early as March, these people hated Trump, and this investigation was anything but by the book. And at the end of the day, what Comey did just blows me away as much as it does y'all. And I can't believe that this happened to my FBI. I told you the story, Mr. Ray, uh, Director Ray, about wanting to be part of the organization, and y'all were smart enough not to take me. The bottom line is, if you're on our side of the aisle, this really does hit you hard. And we can't just write it off. I think there was a lot of bias that did affect an investigation that is, to me, almost impossible to explain using any standard that I grew up with as a prosecutor or even as a defense attorney. This is struck to page on October the 20th. Trump is an effing idiot. The bottom line is I'm glad you found what you found, Mr. Horwitz. Mm -hmm. I'm not buying that the Clinton email investigation was on the up and up. And the reason I'm not buying it is because the two people intimately involved, one, the guy, the, the lead investigator, clearly did not want to see Donald Trump become president of the United States. Finally, do you agree with me that finding her liable criminally would be inconsistent with stopping Donald Trump? If they found Hillary Clinton was criminally liable, mm -hmm. that paves the way for Donald Trump. Can I, you put those two things together? I, I guess it would depend when, but yes, I could see conceivably July, it could. Or the convention. Oh, cl it clearly could conceivably. Well, not only clearly conceivably, that's exactly what's happening here, folks. Mm -hmm. You cannot hold her criminally liable and stop him. As to the law, why did they change gross negligence in the original statement, Director Ray, to reckless disregard? I, I think I would defer to the Inspector General who looked into that. Why did they do that? Um, it, the, the explanation was that... Can I just suggest something? Yeah. Gross negligent is a criminally liable standard. Correct. So if they had said it the way they originally wrote it, she's guilty of a crime, and the reason they changed it is because she's not guilty of a crime, and if you want to stop him, it can't be gross negligence. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between reckless disregard and gross negligence? Uh, not much. It's a it's lot politically. Much, right. 